Joe Fryer in for Chris Jansing live at MSNBC headquarters in New York City. As we come on the air, we are watching two huge stories that are unfolding right now. The first out of South Florida, where we are expecting the imminent release of the search warrant used in Monday's FBI search at Mar-a-Lago. The second on Capitol Hill, where the House will begin voting this afternoon on the Democrats' big health care and climate change bill. We are going to start in Florida as we wait for that search warrant and a list of items taken from former President Trump's home earlier this week. The DOJ gave Trump's team a chance to oppose the warrant's release. Instead, Trump said last night he encouraged it. That unsealed document could fill in some of the blanks, helping us understand why the FBI felt the search was necessary. One clue may come from a stunning new report in the Washington Post. FBI agents were looking for classified documents related to America's nuclear program. That is according to people familiar with the investigation. NBC News has not confirmed that report. This morning, Trump called it a hoax. One of his attorneys was asked about it last night on Fox. She was not quite so explicit. Is it your understanding that there were not documents related to our nuclear capabilities or nuclear issues that had national security implications in the president's possession when the agents showed up at Mar-a-Lago? That's correct. I, I don't believe they were. And if they thought well, they were- Well, do you know were, for a fact? Do you know for a fact I, they I, were? I, have you spoken to the president about it? I, I have not specifically spoken to the president about what nuclear uh, uh, materials may or may not have been in there. I do not believe there were any in there. I want to bring in NBC News justice and intelligence correspondent Ken Delanian. Charles Coleman is a civil rights attorney and former prosecutor. Carol Lamb is a former judge and U.S. attorney. Both are MSNBC legal analysts. And Michael Steele is former RNC chairman and an MSNBC political analyst. Ken, let's start with you. Where do things stand right now in the question you've been asked about 500 times today? What will we see and what won't we see once the judge releases this information? Good afternoon, Joe. As of this hour, the Justice Department still has not filed uh, the document with the court, uh, the notice to the judge to ask him to rule to unseal this. They have until 3 p.m. to do that. Uh, after that, it could come at any time. In terms of what we will and won't see, a, a, a typical search warrant has three parts to it. One part is the affidavit of probable cause. That is the thing the Justice Department is not asking to unseal. That includes the, the basis for the search, essentially the FBI's uh, justification to the judge that a crime was committed, that evidence of that crime is present at Mar-a-Lago. It might have information about confidential sources. It might discuss the larger context of the investigation. A lot of secret stuff in there that the Justice Department still wants to protect. So what they're asking to unseal is the actual face of the warrant. It's usually generally a one-page document. And then an appendix that would list the things that the FBI was looking to seize and then an inventory or a receipts page, essentially, that lists the documents they actually did seize. And the real question is going to be, how detailed are those notations? How, were, how are they describing these documents? Because if they're classified, obviously they can't get into details. Um, so it, it likely will be general. But I am told that we will learn things from this document about the seriousness of this investigation and the sensitivity of some of these documents that were found at Mar-a-Lago. All right, so Carol, the DOJ does not want to unseal the affidavit for probable cause. Remind us what that is and why would the DOJ not want to make that public right now? Sure. The, the affidavit in support of probable cause is the document that's given to the magistrate judge by the agent who swears under oath to the accuracy of the information in it. And the reason the Justice Department places it under seal and generally does not move to unseal it until much further down in the proceedings is because it contains everything, basically, that the government knows about this criminal investigation. It, it would include anybody who's brought information to the government's attention. It would include the back and forth that's gone on with the former president and his allies and his teams. It would include perhaps information that is still confidential now to the investigation. And when you're running a criminal investigation, you certainly don't want to be giving a roadmap to the person being investigated. So it's, it's really a, a very simple prospect. But but what it is, is that this affidavit could run 10 pages, it could run 50 pages, it could run 200 pages. So it will have a lot of information in it, including probably some hearsay, includes, including tips. And because they're in the middle of the investigation right now, remember, they're just starting to review the documents now that were taken from Mar-a-Lago. 
this would not be the time that the Justice Department would want to make that information public. All right, Charles, we talk about the search warrant here. What is it that you are most interested to see once this is released? Well, Joe, there's been a lot of conversation from the Trump organization and people around them about internal leaks in rats. I'm going to be looking to see whether any part of what's unsealed in this warrant gives some insight as to where the documents were actually located in Mar-a-Lago. And that's important for a couple of reasons. When you are seeking to get a search warrant from a judge, you are supposed to, particularly when it comes to a residence, you are supposed to plead with great specificity and particularity where in that residence those items, that evidence is located. And so... Mar-a-Lago is a huge property. You're not going to be able to identify where those things are unless you have someone from the inside. And so I think the degree of detail that we may see in the, la the, the, the specificity around the location of wherever those documents are is going to give some insight as to, is there a leak from the inside? Is there a rat? Is there someone who's giving information to the DOJ and cooperating? We likely know that there is, but this is one thing that's going to strongly confirm it. All right, Carol, I want to ask you about this report from The Washington Post. NBC News has not confirmed it, but The Post is reporting agents were looking for classified documents related to nuclear weapons. Uh, those are, I would suspect, the kind of documents that would justify this kind of search, right? Well, sure. I mean, it, anything that the former president took from Mar-a-Lago that he was not supposed to take, and apparently those categories are, are fairly broad, uh, would be enough justification to do use a subpoena or a search warrant to try to get it back. But you know, often the Justice Department would not resort to something like a search warrant as opposed to a request or a subpoena unless they were very, very concerned about the location of those documents and what might happen to those documents. So I don't think there's any question, including the fact that Jay Brad Bratt, the head of counterintelligence at DOJ actually signed the unsealing motion yesterday. I don't think there's any question that what we're talking about here are classified documents. And if they include nuclear information, that just ratchets the concern up that much higher. All right. So, Michael, Trump put out a message this morning refuting the Washington Post report while simultaneously suggesting that the FBI planted evidence. Even if this list, this search warrant that comes out today and the property receipt shows exactly that, those documents, do you think that's going to matter to Trump supporters? And no matter what's in the search warrant, how much do you think this is going to start to matter to elected GOP lawmakers who've really been defending the former president this week? Well, when you're deaf, dumb, and blind to anything that Donald Trump says when it comes to his culpability, then it doesn't matter. I mean, Donald Trump is setting his own narrative. He wants to... He got boxed out by the attorney general, quite honestly. The bluff was called, and now they're trying to save face on that because they never thought that the the more traditional, you know, cautious uh, to a fault uh, attorney general would actually move uh, the way he has. So now they're scrambling. Uh, that's why his lawyer is sitting there on Fox News not knowing what the hell her client knows or having talked to him. Um, so, And that's how Trump kind of likes it, too. So you have that side of it. Trump wants the story to go in his direction. Merrick Garland has redefined what that story is, and now they're scrambling. Um, on the other side of that, you have Republicans on the Hill who are trying to stay as quiet about this as they possibly can, secretly hoping this thing blows up and it prevents Trump from getting into the presidential race, while at the same time, when necessary, going out and claiming, uh, oh, you know, those documents may have been planted and now we want to defund the FBI. That level of, again, deaf, dumb and blindness to what Merrick Garland is putting out in front here is going to make it more difficult once this is ultimately revealed for them to hold those positions. So what you see Trump doing now is trying to, again, realign the narrative, put some other uh, information, create some distance so that people can believe something other than what the facts are telling them.